Hello, and thanks for joining me on this episode of Simply Saturday, where I get to show you a card that is fast and easy to make. My name is Julie, and this is Stamp with Julie Baum. Today we'll be making this lovely Christmas card, which goes together quite quickly. Let me tell you the pieces that you're going to need. For your card base, you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by five and a half, and has been scored and folded at four and a quarter. Then you'll need a complementary piece of cardstock that is just a little bit smaller. This is going to be a layer on our card. So this piece is five and a quarter by four inches. Then you'll need a basic white piece. And this piece is again, slightly smaller. So this one is five inches by three and three quarter inches. You'll need a strip of designer series paper. I've chosen to use the um, DSP called Painted Christmas and we're going to be able to use either side of this. We'll determine once we get to that point. This piece measures one inch by five inches. Aside from that we just need some scraps. So I have a scrap of my evening evergreen. I chose um, the darker of the two greens and then a scrap of white for stamping and punching. I also have a little um, very narrow piece of red braided trim. This is actually a retired, uh, a retired trim, but I do still have quite a bit of it. So whatever you're going to use, you do want to pick kind of a dainty and quite narrow piece of ribbon or trim. And I've got about eight or nine inches, just enough to tie a bow. The other thing you'll need is a tiny scrap of silver cardstock or silver foil. Often we carry it as like a specialty paper and right now we are offering um, a pack of silver. There, There's a pack of silver papers with different finishes. There's a mirror finish, a brushed, and a matte finish. So the silver paper is available. All right, so I want to show you a little trick um, in today's tutorial that perhaps you've seen before, but maybe you haven't and it's a really good one to learn So we're gonna do that first and then we will jump into our stamping and creating our card So this is what I want to show you. I'm gonna go back to this layer This is going to be mounted onto my card base like so, but we're going to cut out a branch or a bow with this die and the stamps and the dies that I'm using are the Decorated with Happiness stamp set and the coordinating dies. And at this moment, I'm forgetting what the dies are called because they, up until currently, have a different name. Um, I am aware that that change is coming, that we're going to be naming the die set the same name as the stamp set, which is going to make things a whole lot easier for us demonstrators. Um, so I've taken this little branch or bow die and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out of the center of my panel. So I was going to bring in my mini cutting machine, um, but this piece of cardstock is four inches across, which is just slightly too wide to fit through the mini. So I do need to bring my large stamp and cut and emboss machine into view to show you how I'm going to do this. I know it looks like a monster on camera. All right, so I have my um, platform one and my layer two already there. I have an acrylic plate next, which is a plate number three. Then my cardstock with the die. And again, I want to cut this shape right out of the center. That's important and you'll see why in just a moment. And then I'm gonna cover that with a second acrylic plate, a plate number three. All right, so this is going to run through like so, and then I can move this out of the way and take our layers apart, revealing our die cut. All right, so here's my die. We're done with that. I can set that aside. 
Here is the layer of evening evergreen that now has that shape cut out of the center. And here is our lovely die cut. There's a couple little areas that need to be poked through, popped out. So I'm just gonna do that with the tip of my take your pick tool. Now you might be thinking, why did I cut my die out of the piece I'm gonna be using on the card? Well, what you're about to see is how this is a paper saving trick. Let's see, did we get them all? Here's an, this one's hanging on. I could have pulled out my die brush, but I knew that I'd only have a couple of these little ones to pop through, so I didn't take the time to do that. There we go. I love the look of that little Christmas tree branch. One of these guys is hanging on. Here we go. All right, so let me show you how this is paper saving. I'm gonna take my card base, and I'm going to actually attach this as a layer right onto here, because this is what's going to happen. Our white piece is going to go over it. So you would never know that that die cut has been taken out of the center of that piece. Otherwise, I would have used this entire piece at four by five and a quarter. Then I would, would have needed a rather large scrap to cut this piece out. So I just saved like a good um, chunk of my evening evergreen paper by doing it this way. All right, so we've got the pieces. Let's just go ahead and do some gluing. So I'm gonna attach this piece to the base first. I wanna get all around the edges. Oh, I might need to switch to my new glue. This one's starting to get to the end. So I'm gonna go all around the edges and then also down. Okay, I'm gonna switch. I don't wanna keep shaking. All right, and then I'm gonna get also in here closer to the die cut, just so this is gonna lay nice and flat on that card base. All right, like so. Now remember, where that cutout appears right now is not going to, going to show at all because it's gonna get covered up by our white panel. All right, now this piece is not attached. I'm really not worried about it since it's getting covered. If that concerns you, you could always go back and put a tiny little dab of glue underneath it, but I'm really not worried about it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is attach this piece, but I do want to draw your attention to one thing. Since this is a Simply Saturday card and it's designed to be fast and easy, we're going to use a plain white piece as you see here. But at the end of this tutorial, I'm going to show you two other examples where this piece has been run through with an embossing folder to give it a little bit of dimension and design. But for this card, we are using it plain. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and attach that next. We're not doing any stamping on that piece of white, so that's why I'm not worried about going ahead and attaching it. If I was gonna stamp on it, then we always stamp before we stick. All right, I'm going to lay this right in the middle, eyeball my borders all the way around so they're about as equal as I can get them, without measuring, of course, and press that into place. All right, and now we've just covered up that hole that we made in the previous layer. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is decide which side of our designer series paper we want to use. Either one will look lovely, and the examples that I'll show you at the end have one of each, so it doesn't really matter which way we go. I think on this one, I'm going to use this side showing. All right, so again, with my liquid glue, and this is going to get lined up with the white piece on the left side, at the bottom, and on the right side, as you can see. So it totally goes side to side, covering 
the bottom of the white piece entirely. All right, next we're going to glue our tree branch on. So I'm just gonna flip this over and using my liquid glue, I'm gonna put some dots on the widest areas that I can find on here. You don't need a ton of glue to hold this in place, um, but you just want some significant areas with your dots of glue. So you can see I'm just kind of bouncing around, finding those wider areas, areas and skipping those skinny ones that would be really hard to reach with the glue anyway. All right, once I've got several dots like that, let's see, I think I want one out here on the end, I will also put a couple on the actual stem. And then this is going to go into place. Um, pretty much centered, maybe slightly to the right of center. There we go. So again, that was plenty of glue to hold down all that delicate area. And then I want to make sure that my stem goes down. All right, there we have that. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do is my stamping. So I have a scrap of white and I'm going to use my Evening Evergreen ink pad and the stamp that says Christmas Greetings. Let me see if it's here in the box or if I already dug it out. Nope, it's here. All right, so I'm just gonna lay this on my work surface, take a block, place it on, and pick up my stamp. All right, walking this around so I get nice even inking. And because it's a photopolymer stamp, I think I will go ahead and tuck a stamp and pierce mat underneath my cardstock. This is typically the um, answer if your question or your problem is that you're not getting nice, clear images from your photopolymer stamps. Often, just placing that mat underneath your cardstock gives the stamp a little bit more give as you're pressing the image onto the paper and will often give you the best of the best stamped images. Nice and crisp and clear. Okay, then I'm gonna use our double oval punch this has been around a while, but it is a rather new punch to me because I've got oval dies, I had some old oval punches, but I was very encouraged to um, add this punch to my collection. I like the size of the oval, and when I punch this out, you're gonna see it's not quite the same as the scalloped oval that we used to have. It's just kind of ruffly instead of scalloped. You'll see it when I punch it out. All right, let's do the white piece first. So I'm gonna slide this down inside the plain oval and punch that out. And then out of my scrap of evening evergreen, I'll do the top oval with the decorative edge. And now you can see, let me pull in some white paper. Oh, that's all right, this had some stamping on it from previously, I just wanted to show you the edge of this. So it's not quite as rounded as I would call a scalloped edge. It's a little bit more angular. So I'm not sure if there's a term for that, but I really like the shape of it, I like the look. All right, so I'm gonna attach my white oval to the green oval. trying to center it best I can. And then this is going to get placed onto the card with a couple of dimensionals. So I have been needing to restock mine. I, I own them, but they are in a different um, area of my stamping space. So I'm down to this tiny bit that's left. So I'm glad these were in my 
drawer that is really convenient right where I'm working. Okay, so I'm gonna use two dimensionals on this. taking the backings off of those into the trash. And then this is gonna be really lovely, just kind of centered here at the bottom. Very pleasant looking, kind of calm too. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is show you the die cut. I went ahead and did this ahead of time. This is done out of the silver foil paper. It's very pretty, done out of a metallic paper. This is what the die itself looks like all right so we're going to add this to the card and probably the best way is a little bit of liquid glue as well the area that you have to work with isn't too awful tiny so you're able to get some dots placed all right so this is going to hang right here from my branch your placement can be determined on where you actually glued that down whether the ornament is further to the left or where it hanging anywhere on the branch is going to look just fine all right so this needs a second to grab on there we go then i'll take that length of red trim as i said this one was a retired trim but all you need is a narrow ribbon or trim or you could use um, baker's twine if you wanted to do that i'm going to make a bow and make a smaller bow about like so and easiest way to do this will be with a glue dot so I'll take the knotted part of my bow, press it right down into one of the glue dots. These are almost impossible to see on camera, but as this unrolls, you can kind of see the little dots of glue. If you can't, trust me, they're, they're there. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna peel my bow off of the backing paper with the glue dot still stuck to it. And that way I can just place this right in that spot and give it a good press down. That's going to hold my bow down and I don't need to wait for anything um, wet to dry. So glue dots are really the way to go when you're attaching certain embellishments. I'm going to use my paper snips, snips to just um, trim up these tails like so. And we have a very lovely, attractive Christmas card that we put together super fast. All right, now I do want to show you those other two in case, um, instead of speed, in case you wanted to take a little bit more time and add one more bit of dimension. So let me show you this one is actually done with a retired 3D die. This was available last year, so if you got this one while it was available, then good for you. This is the Evergreen Forest, and it looks like this. So you can see that texture on the white layer. Just adds a teeny bit. Here it is compared to the plain one. The plain one is in no way ugly. Um, this is very lovely, but again, it would have taken that extra step of doing the embossing folder. And then a lovely die that is new this year in the July to December mini catalog. Um, actually, that isn't true. This is in the annual catalog. This came out last Christmas. So this is in the annual and it's called Whimsical Woodland. Look at how adorable and fanciful those trees are. Super cute. So here is the same card with that embossing folder used in the background. Super, super cute as well. And as you can see, this side of the paper is very attractive as well as this side, just whatever one appeals to you the most. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a fun, fast card. I hope that you will um, case it and make one just like it or very similar. Please do leave me a comment and a thumbs up. I really appreciate your interaction. 
I really appreciate you watching so faithfully as you do. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do that. And when you do that, be sure to click on the bell so that you get a notification each and every time I post a new video to YouTube. Until next time, I will see you later. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. See, I was, I was closing out my tutorial. Um, to get all of the info on this particular project, just open the description below the video and you will find dimensions and links to a shopping list and also a host code if you'll be going to my online store and placing a product order. Now I can say thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy stamping.